we're going to look at a kind of an interesting circuit this time around. Let's, we're going to solve the problem in the same way we've solved problems before, but just something that's a little bit unique. So this circuit that we have has a voltage source and a resistor, and we can see that it has a nice little loop here. We're going to attach another resistor here, and then we're going to go here, and at this point, on the far side of the circuit, we're going to put another battery. And this extra battery is what's going to cause our circuit to be a little bit interesting to solve. And it also forces us to not be able to use resistors in parallel like we may want to. However, we still have all the tools that we need to solve this circuit. We're going to use Kirchhoff's laws to analyze this. And when we use Kirchhoff's loop law, we have to choose a way to go around the loop. And it doesn't matter which way we do that. We can see we have two natural loops, one over here, one over on the, on the right side. We're going to choose for the sake of argument. Both of them are going to go in the clockwise manner. And this is just a convention. If things go backwards from it, it's something that we can deal with later. Before we write down all the equations, let's assign direction to the current as well. And similar to what we do with these, this counterclockwise or this clockwise manner, we're going to choose the current to say it's flowing through this resistor at this point. So we're looking at the current flowing in this direction and the current flowing in this direction. So let's look at this left part of the loop, this left left loop. We're going to start off. And we see that we have a voltage source. So the voltage source gives us uh, the first uh, the first term in our equation down here. As we move up to the circuit, we come across this resistor, and there's going to be some current flowing through it. So there's a voltage drop, and because of Ohm's law, we'll see that that voltage drop is equal to I times R, I1 times R. Now if we look at the right circuit, we see that we have minus I2 times R. This is the voltage drop through this resistor. We don't know what I2 is, but we know the voltage drop um, is equal to I2 times R2. And as we move along, the next thing we we'll come across is this voltage source. And we're going to subtract off the voltage source because we see that the voltage, positive is on this end, negative on this way, we're going around the loop in a clockwise manner. So we get a negative V0. And we know that the loop around here, because of conservation of energy or Kirchhoff's loop law, we're going to add to zero. So now that we've done this, we have two unknowns. We assume we know R1 and R2 and the voltage sources, both of them are V0 in this case. What we're looking for is I1 and I2. So we can rearrange the equations. And the first equation over here is equal to I1 times, is equal to V0 over R1. And the second equation is going to give us I2 is equal to negative V0 over R2. And these two equations tell us something that uh, important things. First thing that we know is that each current, um, that since the current depends only on the resistor and the voltage, these two uh, loops act as separate um, circuits. So we can see that I2 is only proportional to V0, the one that we got over here, and R2. I1 is only proportional to the first battery times R1. So it's interesting. This it acts as two separate circuits, even though they do share a common wire. The second thing is we notice that this negative sign here indicates that our direction of current through this resistor is actually wrong. And if we were go back and think that, yes, these are acting as two separate circuits, that naturally the current's going to want to flow in this direction, uh, in the counterclockwise manner. So the negative sign says that our choice of this is just backwards, so it's flowing in the opposite direction. So actually what's happening, as I said, current's flowing backwards.